In the DNS system, there are two types of mapping, forward mapping and reverse mapping. The DNS system was mainly designed for forward mapping. In forward mapping, name servers translate names into IP addresses. Later, they added reverse mapping to the DNS system for security and diagnostic purposes. In reverse mapping, name servers translate IP addresses into names. It is an optional feature. Although it is optional feature, you should use it. In modern computer networks, many services use it to authenticate the source address. For example, email service uses it to verify the source email address. If you do not configure reverse mapping for a domain, other domains will not accept emails originating from it. In forward mapping, when an end device wants to know the IP address of a remote device or service, it sends a name resolution query to the resolver system. The resolver system forwards that query to all named servers in a sequence until it finds the answer. This sequence is known as the DNS namespace. In other words, a DNS namespace is a sequence of domain names arranged in a hierarchy. A domain name is a text label for the domain. In this hierarchy, the root domain stands at the top. It uses a null character as the label. You can write a resource name with or without its parent's domain name. If you write its name with parent domain names, it is called a fully qualified domain name. A fully qualified domain name uses dots to separate domain names. It starts with the resource's name and ends with the root domain's name. Since the root domain uses a null character as the name, it always ends with a dot. This is an example of a fully qualified domain name. In this name, FTP is the resource name. It is the child of the example domain. The example domain is the child of the calm domain. The calm domain is the child of the root domain. Each domain uses an authoritative name server to resolve queries for resources available inside it. If it has a child domain, it does not resolve queries for the child domain. It provides a referral to the child domain's authoritative name server. Only authoritative name servers can resolve queries. If a name server is not authoritative for a domain, it provides a referral to the next authoritative name server in the sequence. Since all authoritative name servers work in a hierarchy, a resolver system can easily reach the authoritative name server that can resolve its queries. This process is an example of forward mapping. In reverse mapping, a resolver system resolves an IP address with a name. Suppose the resolver system wants to know the name of the IP address 192.168.0.3. For this, it follows the same steps it uses in forward mapping. It sends the first query to the root name server and follows the referral until it gets the answer. Unlike fully qualified domain names, IP addresses do not include domain names. An IP address includes two types of addresses, the network address and the host address. For example, in the IP address 192.168.0.3, the network address is 192.168.0, and the host address is 3. Network addresses are used to organize and find IP addresses. Host addresses are used to provide a unique identity to an endpoint or a resource. A network address is like a domain name. A host address is similar to a resource name. Since IP addresses do not include domain names, developers used a different approach to build a domain tree for IP addresses in the DNS namespace. They created a domain called ARPA as a child domain of the root domain and used it to build a domain tree for IP addresses. There are two versions of IP addresses, IP4 and IP6. To keep the IP addresses of both versions separate, they created two additional domains as the child domains of the ARPA domain. For IP4 addresses, they created the in-address domain. For IP6 addresses, they created the IP6 domain. They constructed the domain tree for both versions inside their respective domains. To construct a domain tree for IP addresses, they used network addresses. But there was a problem. Unlike domain names which are written from right to left in fully qualified domain names, network addresses are written from left to right in IP addresses. To solve this problem, they flipped the IP addresses in the domain tree. For example, the IP address 192.168.0.3 will be written as 3.0.168.192 in the domain tree. The DNS system uses fully qualified domain names. A fully qualified domain name includes all parent domain names. To convert this address into the fully qualified domain address, we need to write its parent domain's name with it. 192.168.0.3 is an IP4 address. The parent domain of IP4 addresses is in address the in address domain is the child of the ARPA domain. The ARPA is the child domain of the root domain. 
Because of this, the fully qualified domain name of the IP address 192.168.0.3 will be 3.0.168.192. in address ARPA. If the resolver system wants to know the name of the service or host using the IP address 192.168.0.3, it sends the first query to the root name server. The root name server provides a referral to the ARPA name server. The ARPA name server provides a referral to the in-address name server. The in-address name server provides a referral to the 0.168.192 name server. The 0.168.192 name server provides the name associated with host address 3. This process is an example of reverse mapping. Authoritative name servers use zone files for translation. There are two types of zone files, forward lookup zone file and reverse lookup zone file. A forward lookup zone file maps names with IP addresses. A reverse lookup zone file maps IP addresses with names. Forward lookup zone files are compulsory. You need to create a forward lookup zone file for every domain. In that file, you need to add records for all resources whose names you want to translate. Reverse lookup zone files are optional. You only need to create a reverse lookup zone file for the domain which runs services that need reverse mapping. In that file, you need to add records only for those services that need reverse mapping. If you do not want to provide reverse lookup for a domain, you do not need to create a reverse lookup zone file for it. There are two versions of IP addresses, IP4 and IP6. You can use a single forward lookup zone file to map names with IP addresses of both versions. But you cannot use a single reverse lookup zone file to map both versions IP addresses with names. You need to use separate reverse lookup zone files for both versions. You only need to create a reverse lookup zone file for the IP version your domain uses. For example, if your domain does not use IP6 addresses, you do not need to create a reverse lookup zone file for IP6 addresses. A reverse lookup zone file uses the same configuration style as a forward lookup zone file. You can easily create a reverse lookup zone file from the forward lookup zone file. As mentioned earlier, a forward lookup zone file is compulsory for each domain. You need to create and configure it before you create and configure the reverse lookup zone file. If you have a forward lookup zone file, you can easily create a reverse lookup zone file from it. Let us understand this process through an example. Linux saves zone files in the slash var slash name directory. This is the forward lookup zone file of the example.com domain. Create a copy of this file. You can choose any name for the copied file. Usually, administrators prefer the domain's network ID with a DB extension. It makes finding and managing zone files easier. In our example, the network ID of the example domain is 192.168.0. Flip this address and add a DB extension to it. Open this file. This is a line comment. The name server will ignore it. Change it to indicate that this is a reverse lookup zone file. The next is the TTL directive. It defines the maximum time other name servers or resolver systems can cache records served from this file. Keep it as it is. The next is the origin directive. It defines the fully qualified domain name. As explained earlier, in reverse mapping, a fully qualified domain name is the complete network address of the domain. Specify the complete network address of the domain. Zone files are not case sensitive. You can specify a name in both upper and lower cases. The next is a start of authority record. It defines the characteristics and properties of the domain. The next are the NS records. These define authoritative name servers for this domain. The start of authority and NS are compulsory records. These records are the same in both the forward and reverse zone files. You do not need to make any changes to these records. Keep them as they are. Next are mail server records. We do not need them in the reverse lookup zone file. Remove these records. Next are the host records. In a reverse lookup zone file, we use the PTR record type for these records. Unlike forward mapping, reverse mapping is not compulsory. We do not need to add PTR records for all hosts. We need to add PTR records only for publicly accessible services such as mail, web, and FTP. Remove all host records whose names you do not want to make publicly visible. In the remaining records, change the resource record type to PTR. Now, we need to interchange the resource name and IP address fields values. 
While doing this, we need to take care of the zone file's automatic name conversion rule. Remember, in a zone file, if a name does not end with a dot, the zone file automatically converts it into a fully qualified domain name using the origin directives value. We use this rule in the resource name field. In it, we specify only the host name and let the zone file convert it into a fully qualified domain name using the origin directives value. Pick only the host addresses from IP addresses and place them in the resource name field. Because of the same rule, we need to convert these resource names into fully qualified domain names. If we do not do this, the zone file will automatically convert them into fully qualified domain names using the origin directives value. For example, it will convert this name into this name. It will be an incorrect configuration. Convert all resource names into their fully qualified domain names. That's all we need to do in this file. Save the file. Now, this file is ready to translate IP addresses into names. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them with us in the comment section given below.